This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, normally I come up here as I will uh, tomorrow and I speak about what I've been doing for the last 29 years, uh, intravenous ozone therapy. We've done it over 345,000 treatments. We published uh, on uh, effectively treating Ebola. We've published uh, in an article, no one in the world has ever gotten rid of complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, and I've been able to accomplish that and I've been published in it. And today I'm going to talk about, because I was asked to, probably one of the main reasons I've been so successful at what I do, even more so than most ozone uh, therapists around the world. And uh, the reason I became more successful, I believe, is because I hit on certain things that were essential. First, most of my patients are very, very ill, and most of them uh, are very, very poor because they've spent their life's fortune trying to get well. And um, I found three things were necessary to make my therapy successful and prevent problems uh, as well. And the first was keeping everybody well hydrated because you're all 70, we're all 70 plus percent water. And most people walk around without knowing it in a state of dehydration. Uh, so that was essential and for many reasons, cleaning out waste and everything else that we needed for the therapy. And then the second thing had to do with vitamin C because vitamin C is really a coenzyme. It's necessary in every cell of your body for virtually every healthy cellular reaction. And uh, most people are vitamin C deficient, so their body cells aren't, and, and all their organ systems are not functioning optimally. So I told everybody you have to take vitamin C a number of times a day, and it did it for other reasons too, preventing oxidative stress from the therapy and whatnot. But then the third thing became very, very essential and important, and this was the, this was the game changer. Uh, if you really take a good look at our society, once every couple of decades, something big happens, something that's game-changing in various ways. If you look at the IT world back in the 90s, it was the personal, the PC, the personal computer. And then the internet came in, and look how it's changed our lives. And then we got cell phones, and now we have smartphones. Um, uh, so. Over the course of time in the IT world, it's very easy to see the game changes that took place. In the medical nutritional world, which I've been in, it started as natural medicine back in the 70s, soon it became hol called holistic medicine, complementary medicine, integrative medicine, now it's called functional medicine. We're all doing the same thing, but in a better way, and we're combining all different therapies. But one of the big game changers, I think, if you really take a look at it, which of course basically we're talking about supplements here that we need in our life that we don't have enough of or things that'll change our health. And I think liposomal products became the big game changer because it made them uh, more bioabsorbable, bioavailable, and biounutilizable by our body. Um, probably now for the last most of this decade, something has become very important. And if you take a good look at our National Library of Medicine, PubMed.gov, about 20,000 different published studies have shown that the gut, our gut microbiome, the bacteria, the probiotics that live in the wall of our gut and other related factors affect every organ and every system of your, of your body in making them work correctly, in preventing disease, and in, in treating disease. And uh, what we found was, because intravenous ozone therapy kills all the good boys in your gut, I found I needed a probiotic that would replenish the bacteria in the wall of the gut. This is the key place where we need to put it. And virtually, Everybody sitting in this room, if I asked you to raise your hand, have you, anybody who's never had an antibiotic even once in your lifetime, raise your hand. Once, and usually they come from a third world country where it wasn't available. Um, uh, having said that, one person out of this whole room, okay? And now if you eat red meat or chicken that isn't organic and farm-raised fish, 
you're getting uncooked out doses of antibiotics all the time. So you're killing off any good bacteria that might have been living in the wall, which keeps the yeast that lives naturally in the wall of your gut in check and in balance and keeps the bad bacteria from populating it. So we virtually have destroyed our gut's microbiome because of our diet and because of antibiosis that's so commonly used in medicine today. So that's what we're living with. So everybody here suffers from candidiasis, whether you know it or not, intestinal yeast infection, which if you look at the symptoms of it, affects every single part of your body in every single way you can imagine, causing almost every human suffering that you, in terms of a symptom that you could have. So I needed to find something that would make a difference. This was not easy to find. Um, various, virtually all probiotics, not all, but almost all, come in a capsule powder or tablet form. They've been put into suspended animation when they were living to create them into a capsule powder or tablet so they would survive for us to swallow them. The problem is they don't come back to life and you just don't know it. The manufacturers know it which is why they're legally allowed to put on the label so many billion CFUs, they call them colony forming units, alive at the time of manufacture. But that's not what you're gonna get into your gut when you swallow them because they're virtually all asleep and will stay that way and die in your stomach. They won't survive the stomach um, acids and the stomach enzymes that digest us, digest them and make it into your colon gut and into your gut and repopulate it. So we had to find the product and we found various uh, probiotics that were, you know, grown in a fermented way and fermented probiotics such as kombucha and whatnot have a pro have many problems associated with it. First of all, my patients can't do sugar and they're loaded with sugar and they can't do alcohol. And because it's fermented, alcohol became a very big problem. So we had all these issues that we had to overcome. And I looked for a company that had something good and I found a new startup company that had a great product, but it wasn't good enough. It had a lot of problems. And I believe in full disclosure, by the way, is all we do in medicine today. We always do. I bought into the company. So I'm not up here just talking about a product um, that I can sell. I'm talking about it because I became an owner. Why? Because they needed to change it the way I wanted it. I went to the Harvard School of Public Health who published many complaints about why probiotics don't work on it. And I went to um, uh, the Cleveland Clinic uh, who also published. And by the way, this is likely going to be in the Cleveland Clinic within the next several months, uh, hopefully in their functional medicine department from a good friend of mine, Mark Hyman. So in any case, bottom of it all is, uh, we needed to find, I found a product. First of all, it had to have the right bacterias. And before I tell you about the bacterias, I wanted them to be living so they were growing, the bacterias in the product are growing and living on an organic juice made up of mint, kale, lettuce, celery, cucumber, apple, and lemon juice. And getting the, the right juice became a problem because I wasn't happy with the juice they were using. Uh, we had to find a manufacturer that had the right certification because you may know that our USDA allows it to be called organic with only 95% of the juice organic. But that's not good enough. I, patients need 100% because it's what I want to put into me as well. And I found a German certified and USDA certified juice that's 100% organic because the Germans don't allow it to be anything less. Okay, so that became important. So now I had the right media and you have to have the right facility. It has to be an FDA compliant facility and it has to be certified by certain organizations to be clean. It became important because complaints from Harvard were these facilities aren't always as clean as you would like them to be. And you don't know this. We don't know this as the consumer. So now we had to find the right strains of bacteria. I made them throw out all the bacteria. They were using 27 strains and we, we knocked it back down to 15. Why did I choose these 15? What? Published studies from PubMed showing effectiveness against C. diff. Do you know what C. diff is? If you don't, hopefully you never will. Half a million Americans get it every year. 
30,000 Americans, usually seniors and children, die from the uncontrolled diarrhea that it causes. What is it caused by? Taking antibiotics, which kills all the bad bacteria and good bacteria, except for C. diff, which needs special antibiosis to kill it. Well, these studies have proven that these probiotics specific ones will work to prevent and help treat and help prevent C. diff and Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, leaky gut, and all the rest uh, uh, that we deal with when we deal with digestive disorders. So all the bacteria that we chose on the pamphlet that you were given on the back, notice there, there's letters and numbers after their name. Why? They're all patented bacterial strains, which makes them extremely expensive. Okay. And when we couldn't get the exact one because the uh, FDA wouldn't approve it yet for human consumption, we got its brother and sister, which was already approved. So we were able to get 15 strains of bacteria that are shown effective. Now, it's very important. They have to survive the stomach. The stomach is loaded with acid. Okay, and digestive enzymes. All these have been studied and shown to survive the stomach over 85 to 90 percent, depending on which ones you're looking at, so that they will actually get into your gut so they can populate the wall. Then it got more specific. This is an amazingly difficult um, study. I'm, uh, I'm actually, you know, the more you, the, every day that I research this and I see and I learn, I realize how little I know. There's so much more to know. There isn't a week that goes by that there isn't a new study and a new article that comes out showing the gut relationship to everything in your body. The gut liver, the gut brain, um, uh, the gut heart, every, the gut lung, the gut, relay, the gut bacteria are actually organisms that are communicating with the rest of your body. Um, there's bacteria that, uh, that can cause cancer now. They're showing bacteria that can help prevent cancer from being caused in your body, and so on and so on. The, the subject is unbelievable, and there's meetings all around the world just on biome today because it became the, the, a very the, one of the most important areas of study in medicine today. So all these bacteria, I should say all, almost all these bacteria, turned out to have a very important uh, thing about them. They are called the next generation of smart bacteria. What a smart bacteria. <laughs> They're a little brighter than me, I think. Anyway, smart <laughs> this is serious stuff. Smart bacteria actually, when they get into your gut wall, change their genetic expression so they can populate your gut wall more effectively. And each of us are different. So it's amazing that they actually automatically adjust to you as an individual to populate your gut wall better. That's why they're called smart bacterias. So coming up with the right strains of bacteria are important. So now we have the right strains growing in this wonderful environment so I had to make sure certain things didn't happen. First of all, we eliminated certain bacteria that actually act like yeast and cause fermentation to a great degree. So virtually zero alcohol in our product because there's no fermentation taking place. Now, when we put 27 billion bacteria into each two ounce bottle, which is actually a, um, a single dose, okay? It's a single dose. Well, why two ounce bottles? That was another issue. Every, originally, and I tested this on my patients for the last couple of years, we were doing it in quart bottles. And then it occurred to me one day, air gets in every time you open up a bottle. Air is loaded with junk. It damages what's inside. So I wanted a single dose of vial so that air can't damage it. So you're getting something that's pure. Because otherwise, day by day, the junk that's in air would damage and kill, become in competition with my bacteria. And because we only have our bacteria in here, there's actually a thing called competitive exclusion. Okay? Competitive exclusion keeps anything else from growing in this because we put enough of ours in there so it can't grow. That became important. Um, 
glass because it doesn't leach. I don't trust plastics yet. There are some that we could use, making it lighter and wait for shipping. We might turn to them one day, but hopefully not. I love glass. Amber, because light is energy. And I use light energy, in, among other things, in uh, my Hockett sauna that I have, um, my ozone sauna, as part of the healing process in that in the office. Um, and it became very important because light can't damage it. So the 27 billion strains, when we send it to the laboratory, because we make them in small batches, um, came back after one week, because you need safety testing on every batch. You can't just sell out products. It has to be proven safe. Uh, so we have a certified lab that does that work for us, because you need to be use an independent lab, and comes back with almost 40 plus billion bacteria in one week. Why? They're growing and living in there, producing babies. After a month, they're over 100 billion. Now, I wanted it shelf stable, so we know that this will stay unrefrigerated as much as four months right now. The latest test is coming back, it should be five months. Because at the end of five months, it still has to have a minimum of 27 billion bacteria and no contamination. And if that's true, then we got five months, then six months, and we'll move on. Refrigerated, we're expecting it'll last a year because it slows down everything, including the growth, but it'll slow down uh, you know, the, the um, eating of the uh, sugar that's in here. And it actually has four grams of sugar. So it's hy um, hypo uh, hypoglyc you know, for a low glycemic index diets, for my diabetics, they have no trouble taking it. It tastes delicious. Kids love it. When we had the quart bottles, I had one patient who took it home, didn't tell her son, and he drank half the bottle because he thought it was a good tasting <laughs> drink. It's not inexpensive. Um, this tells you all about it and how to get a discount. If you want to bring, uh, come up to the uh, table in a booth we have, I can give you all a bottle to try and take home. Refrigerate it before you use it because it goes from in 10 to 12 minutes from your stomach into your gut. Okay, and that's where we want it to go very rapidly. Thank you very much.